Hey everyone, this is uh, System509 and I'm here with Sergeant Major Mario. We're going to be talking about the movie we just watched called Birds of Prey. Oh, I love it. I love it. But I don't like the fact... See, okay, my problem with Birds of Prey is that I went to watch it and then something happened that absolutely did not happen. And I got so offended, I took my two kids out and I was given free tickets to watch a Sonic the Hedgehog film when I had a better time. Yeah, the same exact thing happened to me. It's so strange. It's uh, like people want to make another one look bad in comparison. <laughs> no, we're here to talk about the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Well, I'm pretty sure they get that from the title. <laughs> so we just we just we're gonna give our spoiler-free review first, I suppose. So yes, in case you couldn't tell, this is pretty much his first podcast. <laughs> he has popped his podcast virginity to the Blue Hedgehog. Ah, it was always fated to be this way, I believe. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> now we're going to do our spoiler free thoughts first of all. So basically the movie is about um, the effects of loneliness on the, psycho the psychology of uh, young children. Yeah, I mean, just to sum up my spoiler, my spoiler free, free thoughts done and dusted, the film's good. De uh, definitely go watch it. Yeah, I'd give it a solid 7 out of 10, definitely. Yeah. Now we've got that out of the way. Holy shit, things. Echidnas exist in the movie. Yeah, I saw that. Oh. I saw that and I was like, huh, I wonder, I wonder what Ken Penn that. <laughs> I hate how that's the first thought I had too. <laughs> I saw it, I was like, that is a tribe. That is the Echidna tribe. That is literally Pachacamac, I think. That might have actually been Pachacamac, but like, like a slightly is, younger one. That is SA1 Echidna tribe. <laughs> I, when I saw that bit in the trailer and people were analysing it online and being like, hey, these might be echidnas, I was like, there's no fucking way they put echidnas in this movie. That's got to be like a bird person or something. But no. Speaking of, bird, speaking of bird person, a fucking owl. Sonic's parent is an owl. Yeah, Sonic's got a mother and she gets killed in the first, like, two minutes. <laughs> when he was a child, that Jesus Christ. <laughs> because of him. Yeah, she dies because of him because he's but a why? stupid. Fuck. But the thing is, like, it's not really explained why they're after him. Like, what they're after his power? I'm gonna guess it's something they can absorb out of him or get out of him by ripping his quills out. Because we clearly see that the the quills, uh, when Doctor Robotnik gets his hands on one, he clearly uses it as like a battery. Yeah, but then again, the Echidnas don't have technology for batteries. They use it. They're still using bows and arrows. <sighs> You know what, I think it's going to be one of those situations where they have advanced tech, but also use primitive stuff. I mean, maybe? It wouldn't surprise but, me. But it'd be kind of stupid, though. It'd be strange, but you know what, that's an aesthetic you don't see very often. I wouldn't mind seeing something like that. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, obviously it's going to be something explained later in the... We'll, we'll, we'll get back to it later, but they, we're quite heavily sequel-baited here. Oh, believe me, we really are. Um, so... After the Echidnas, you know, murder Sonic's mother and then he ends up abandoned on Earth with no way to go back. Um, he ends up living on his own in a place for called... For 10 Green... years. Yeah, for 10 years. He lives in Green Hills, which is like this mountainous region in... I think they said it was in Ohio? I, I believe it was Ohio. I remember the original... I remember the original synopsis was it was going to be in Canada. That would have been strange. Yeah, but... Um... But yeah, and then we essentially got to the first part of the original trailer uh, with the speedometer. But of course, like, you know, Tom is bored out of his mind. <laughs> that was uh, great. Yeah, but you know, it, like, to be honest, it's something that I would probably do, you know? <laughs> like, he's clearly, it's, he's clearly so bored, he starts, like, pointing his speedometer at the little turtle as it's coming across the road. And yeah, was the turtle registered as one mile an hour? <laughs> And then the, and I like then, how, I like that even came up as something. <laughs> and he starts shouting at it, and it's clear like he doesn't want to be there. It's it, they did a great job at, um, introducing that character to us because mm. I was afraid I wouldn't like Tom, and I'm very glad to, to say that I do in fact enjoy that character. And, and I say it's quite cool how they um, 
sorted out Sonic's personality by just being cheeky and fucking around with the speedometer. <laughs> that was adorable. I mean, I couldn't tell if he wanted to just mess with Tom or if he just wanted to see if he can improve on his speed. Yeah, I think he was actually, like, testing himself, wasn't he? Because at first it was, like, 250 miles an hour and then it was 300 and he cheers in the background. <laughs> yeah. That was so good. I love the way they introduced him like that. It, it was good, uh, but it kind of got to one of my problems. Um, like, I don't mind the fact that he was essentially the town's little stalker. <laughs> I didn't mind that because, you know, he, he's learning from his mentor or mother to isolate himself, stay hidden. But, like, we clearly see him on the roof of the building. And, <laughs> yeah. like, he's not even me. It's like, he's clearly staring down at them. And it's like, no one really saw that. Like, no one saw him just staring. It's crazy, because, like, he doesn't... He, he sticks out like a sore thumb in every, like, place he goes in that sequence. You can blatantly see him if you just glanced. Yeah. And even then, like, I like how he says uh, that... You know, he, he, he likes the fact that Tom cares about animals, but yet we, yeah, like, a scene later, Tom is going to get his wife's tranquilizer gun <laughs> to fucking shoot raccoons. I know it's going to work, because it's meant to work on much bigger animals. Like, that would kill a raccoon. That would. That would stop its heart. Um, and then he picks up the little turtle, and he runs around with it, and he's... he's like, I like that. He's that so was... desperate for a friend that he's literally talking to minus animals, and then... After he speeds around with the turtle, the poor thing can't even walk anymore. <laughs> He's fucking <laughs> shivering. Oh, the poor little fella. Also, can we talk about the fact that, um, like, you know, that turtle was happy as fuck. That turtle like, loved it. That after the near-death experience, it was shivering because Sonic <laughs> let go of it. Uh, yeah, it was great. It was like a little bit of um, back and forth between him and the turtle, of all things. Mm. But then we, got to the, then we got to the introduction of the characters and one thing I will give the film props for is the fact that Tom and his missus were already together. Yeah, they like, didn't they do were together, that. They were married and they were happy. Because you see films like these and they pull the cliche of either a will they, won't they or oh, they're getting divorced and oh, they're going to get back together at the end because random bullshit that really wouldn't happen in real life. Oh, yeah, I was afraid it was going to be, oh, we're having an argument, you can't... You know what I thought it was going to be? What? This is legit what I thought the story was going to be about. Him and his girlfriend are having a breakup because she wants kids and he doesn't. And then she goes away for a while and then he spends time with Sonic. And then Sonic teaches him that he's okay to have kids and he's going to be a good father. And that would have been a plot. And I'm glad that wasn't the plot. Yeah, so we didn't really have to worry about, you know, love bullshit. <laughs> yeah, they didn't... She accepted him very quickly. <laughs> Well, I mean, they kind of, they kind of had to fit in a story narrative, but at the end of the day, I think she was kind of prepared for it because you know her husband is listed as a fucking terrorist in the news. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that bit. We'll get to that bit. Yeah, we'll get to that bit. Because but... that's one of my problems with the movie. Mm. But um, um, so how do you, after... how'd you then... feel about his lightning powers? Could have been explained a bit better. Yeah, they don't give it much in information about that, do we? All we all I seem to know is that it seems to be triggered through anger. Anger and sadness and I think happiness at the end. Uh yeah. So I think it might just be pure emotions like um like Starfire from DC. Hmm. But that's a weird ref reference. Very. Um Well I'm well, no, actually it's quite fitting because Sonic reads the flash. <laughs> so yeah. it fits. Oh, um that's good. But but then, okay, so then we got one of the best moments that actually made me laugh. Sanic is canon in the in the Sonic film world. Yeah, I've got that in my notes. I literally wrote down Sanic is shown. Friggin literally, like fucking like the town crazy bloke saw Sonic and literally drew Sanic as representation <laughs> of the artwork. Let's say so. It's a clarify. Nobody. And it's not it's not like it's not like they got the Sanic from Google. That's actual pencil drawn. So <laughs> someone sat down and drew Sanic, <laughs> probably more than once, to make sure they got it right. Well, the whole context in the story is um, that guy. What was his name? Crazy Dave or something? Crazy Dave, Crazy Guy, or oops. crazy something? Crazy something. Yeah, Crazy Something is the only person in town who thinks Sonic exists. And he's constantly going around the town yelling at people that don't believe him that Sonic is real. 
to the point where he sets bear traps all over the city and Sonic sets them all off like they're nothing <laughs> I mean and like he draws this picture of Sonic and we see it clear as day just right there and I'm like wow one thing I did expect to happen was because we see that Sonic has been stalking Tom's family like <laughs> like you know peeking through the windows to watch like speed with them and stuff like that yeah um when he's backing away from the house, I did expect Mr. Crazy to just suddenly grab him out of nowhere. Uh, you thought he was going to play a bigger role. Well, no, not a bigger role, but, you know, I thought he was just going to grab Sonic. Sonic's going to be cheeky. He's like, oh, you got me, Nadine, and I'm going to fuck off. <laughs> yeah, maybe that would have um, that would have made that guy look a lot less endearing to me if he'd shown up at someone else's house like that. Yeah. But then again, you know, like, if he's so hell-bent on catching the blue devil, you know, it wouldn't really surprise me. Yeah. So, um, so what happened, what kicks off the plot, basically, is um, Sonic goes to a baseball game, and as he's watching, because um, he's underneath the stands, the seats. Yeah, which no one saw him, because he was blatantly in the open. He didn't speed there, he stopped and he stopped and walked to it. He was quite in the open, I was surprised no one saw him, but anyway. Yeah. So he's, he's watching the baseball game and he sees this kid get a bunch of high fives from people and he's like, man, I want to do that. I want to high five another person. So when night comes, he, he gets the scene from the trailer where he's playing baseball by himself and he is every single person on the, the court. Which I like. I, yeah. do, I, do, I do like that. Yeah, it was very harrowing actually. It started off kind of funny, but then as the scene progressed, it got like legitimately depressing. Yeah. He got, I've never seen Sonic that sad before and then he... He, he doesn't cry, which I would have liked to see him cry, actually, to be honest. But uh, he doesn't no, cry. No, going against Sega's rules. <laughs> yeah, those stupid mandates. Ugh. Like, he, he, he starts off upset, but then he vents out in anger, which gets which builds up too much because he's running in one area. So it builds up sort of a square burst that knocks, that knocks out power of the entire uh, Pacific Northwest. That's it, yeah, Northwest. Um, which prompts him to get Robotnik involved. <laughs> and the way they talked about Robotnik before he was introduced was great. Because <laughs> yeah. they got one of the guys in that scene was the voice of Grounder from the old Adventures cartoon, by the way. Really? Yeah, I looked into it. He played voice of Grounder, and I can't remember his name, but he's been in so much stuff as just like like background characters and like minor roles. It's insane. His IMDb is huge. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, so they got the military there to have a look at it. You know, they're looking at the big. Oh wait, 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 wait! Hold on, hold on. We forgot a most important thing. Robotnik has wiped out an entire country. Oh yeah. What was it called? Like something, something, Stan? And then like, the... what the hell happened there? And the guy's like, I've never even heard of that country, and it's like, yeah, there's a reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He wiped out a fucking nation. But yeah, uh, it's like so. Yeah, so, so before Robotnik appears, uh, we find out that Tom is moving to San Francisco to become an actual policeman. Oh yeah, because he's uh, upset about how lame his job is in a small hick town. Well, we find out later that it was like on his bucket list, I guess you could say. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, they, they celebrate with cake. Uh, but she pulls out the wrong cake in case in case Leia got declined, which I like that. I also love how the second one had I I had no doubt written on it. That was cute. Yeah, was I never had a doubt. She's like, nope, nope, <laughs> no doubt at all. So um, yeah, he. That's the scene where she left the movie for like half an hour, wasn't it? Yeah, because she went to her sister's, I think. Who is going to be a very popular character, I think. Uh, Robotic is brought in, and we see what his drones could do. Um, yeah. It's analyze. Okay, here's where things got a bit, like you know, a bit unbelievable. <laughs> so, okay, so, so so I get that Sonic wears so many shoes that are worn out to the point where like um, his feet would have worn through the shoe. Oh god, you see but, his fucking feet, don't you? I forgot about that. Not fully, but we see bits of it. But anyway, so we see like, so so we see a footprint that was left on the rock, which. Robotnik was able to analyze the shoe print, then get the footprint, and judging by that, he was able to, to determine the size and the weight of Sonic. It is somehow. It is a bit like. Mm, I think I've seen stuff like that in other shows, but it's like. I don't know about that one. Yeah, that's that's a bit more like magic than science to me. I mean, it like. 
if it was an actual like you know dna trace then that's fine but they literally just scanned the sh a shoe print on a rock i guess they had to find a reason to just keep him around in that area because he would have left otherwise i guess i don't know he did anyway, find he just... the did he find the quill there or did he find it somewhere else uh, he found the quill in Tom's house because because uh, Tom finds the quill left on the road. Right, yeah, that makes, that's that's right, yeah. So he should have found a quill. Maybe Sonic could have left another one lying around. Maybe. But anyway, so after so after that, we get to um, uh, so Sonic finds out that the military is after him. So he goes to Tom's shed. Well, no, first go he, first he goes to his cave. Wait, I want to say real quick that that scene where he's gathering all his stuff to leave with was actually really sad as well. He plans to use the rings, which as we find out in the film, the rings let you transport to other places as long as you think of them. So, which, uh, I mean, I can kind of get. <laughs> it's a good way of justifying the rings in the game, I guess. It does pretty much establish that magic exists in this universe. Well... Yeah, in this universe, not not in our world, though. How do you feel about the line where Sonic says um, all civilized um, races in the universe use them? No, like, he, no, no. He said all advanced civilized uh, species in the universe use them. How do you feel about that? Uh, you... Feel could have been explained a bit more. <laughs> yeah, they but feel... even then, if that's the case, why doesn't he go to one of those advanced civilized races and not to Mushroom Hills, though? I can actually answer that because he would probably get captured a lot easier on an advanced planet than he would on an abandoned one. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so uh, yeah, so Sonic's next next destination was essentially Mushroom Hill Zone. But it's a, place a whole of just, planet. Yeah, a, play, a, just a planet of nothing but mushrooms. <laughs> um, but and, and, and he's ready to do it in Tom's garage because that's where he ran to next. Of course, you know they meet. Tom freaks out, shoots Sonic in the leg. This is where the plot gets interesting, I guess. It's a, um, what's the word for it? Um, a series of unfortunate events when, um, basically what happens is Sonic gets shot in the leg, he drops the ring and it opens the portal on the floor, and then- To San Francisco, because he saw San Francisco on Tom's shirt. Which made him think of San Francisco, which made the portal open to San Francisco. And then he falls over and then drops his bag of rings onto a rooftop in San Francisco. Yeah. And then the portal closes so he can't teleport away and he has to run to San Francisco on foot. But he doesn't because he doesn't know where he's going and he <laughs> ran right into the Pacific, but we'll get to that in a minute. Oh, yeah. So it's, so it's apparent at this point that you don't need to visualize the place. You just need to think of it and you'll see it. That must be difficult for someone like Sonic, who can't keep his thoughts straight for like five seconds. Well, he's able to open up the mushroom portal, because he just saw the mushroom drawing on that map of his. Yeah, that's weird. I need to know how that works. Hmm. But anyway, so... So Sonic wakes up in Tom's house, and then Robotnik turns up. Uh, and of course, you know, Sonic's got a high, blah blah blah. He gets found. Uh, Tom punches Robotnik <laughs> in the face. And they start fleeing. That, uh, that punch was the biggest laugh in the movie, by the way, in my favorite. Really? That was the biggest laugh. Everybody, the kids and the adults both laughed their asses off. And I'd seen it already, so it wasn't funny to me. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only guy not laughing at that scene, and I felt awkward. Well, I, I mean, I laughed at it in the original advert. <laughs> yeah, same, but I mean... Hmm. Well, yeah. We, so... need to talk, we need to talk real quick um, about those drones of his... Yes. It's really quick. Let's talk about how the drones are probably some of the most inaccurate machines I've ever seen in my life. I was just going to say they're quite bland. Yeah, they're egg-shaped, aren't they? That's all it is, is every one of his drones is egg-shaped at some point. I mean, even though they just don't look that visually pleasing. <laughs> they look like the ones from 06. Did you think about that at all? Oh, never noticed. The design of them looked a lot like the the, the two-legged ones that he used as in, in, OE, in 06, and it's like, yeah, they're very boring to look at. I hope the next, if they make a sequel, I hope they make them more interesting looking. Well, you know, you know like, in this, it, I mean, it is, he's quite hinted that Robotnik's gone insane at that point, but we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, 
uh, a lot of getting back to's in this. Yeah, we're not very we're not very um, experienced on, on this what we're doing here. Yeah. So the reasoning for the road trip, because I remember a lot of people were asking. So, what's the point of having a road trip with a speedy blue hair child? Yeah, if you want to. And the reason to... is literally because he has no fucking idea what's going on. <laughs> he doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't know how to get there. And he doesn't want to spend the time it would take to go back and forth across America over and over again to try and find San Francisco. Even though he probably could have done it in like a few in like a day, if that. Yeah, just go go start from the top and just work your way down like an old printer. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's not a very entertaining movie. No. So yeah, so the road trip in zoos, a lot of you know carnage happens. Like they start a bar fight, and this is where we this is where we see Sonic speed. Our first quicksilver moment, as I've been calling them. Yeah, like he's about to get punched in the face when he starts a bar fight, and so he goes so fast that he takes off his disguise. He sets he sets up everything <laughs> to where Tom is fine and everyone falls down like dominoes. Yeah, can we talk real quick? Why did that guy call him a hipster? I don't. I don't. That's what confused me. What made them look like hipsters? Why wasn't he confused by a, a small blue monster little thing walking around? Why did he just want to knock him out? I thought I thought he just I thought he was gonna call Sonic a midget or something like that. And it's like <laughs> we don't like midgets here. That would have made but slightly more sense than calling him a hipster. Yeah, like he, he looked nothing like a hipster. <laughs> like neither did Tom for that matter. Tom was just wearing a button-up shirt and jeans. I don't get it. I don't get. I guess it's because they just had to have a fight, but that's just. Maybe have someone freak out over him, and then the fight starts. Like just... also, I totally called that in the adverts that we saw. Those cans were blue and black, and I knew they were going to fit product placement there, and they did. And it was Corona beer. <laughs> I'm actually surprised at the alcohol references in a VG film. Yeah, I haven't seen the kids' film in a long time. I didn't know they could do that. Um... Neither did I. Don't forget, during the scene where we've been slowed down, Sonic does take time out to eat about six chili dogs at once. Yeah. That was great. That was great to see. But it, but it is kind of one of those moments that, you know, it's mentioned in passing so you can easily miss it. And yeah. it's never brought up again, though. That 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 That's a thing. And, yeah, I mean, they don't have to establish everything about his character in one movie. Like, just... Well, I mean, it is supposed to be his favorite food and it has driven plots before. Maybe they'll bring it back in the sequel. That will never Maybe. get made because there's no, I don't think this movie's going to make enough to make a sequel. <laughs> what did you think of Agent Stone? Uh, he's okay. <laughs> he doesn't do much, does he? He didn't really have that much personality to him. I was expecting him to get into a fist fight with Tom at the end, and he doesn't even. <laughs> he disappears from the movie <laughs> for the third for the third act. Yeah, he just flower disappears. Yeah, as soon as um, the last time we see him is when he gives Eggman the goat the goat milk latte, and then he never shows up again. It's not even referenced right. until the very very end where Robotnik's on the alien planet. Hmm. Um, again, we'll get back to that. We will definitely so, get back to that. We get to the hotel bit, um, and then the next day is when Robotnik starts sending out robots. Well, let's talk about so, that. Let's talk about the hotel scene real quick. Because okay. there's a part in that scene where after Sonic has done a whole bunch of stuff at the bar to cross off his own bucket list, there's still one item left on the list and it says, make a real friend. And he doesn't consider Tom a real friend at that point. And then the next scene after that is the scene where while they're getting chased by those robust drones that Eggman sends out, Sonic gets unusually angry at Tom. Like, legitimately upset with him that he's leaving Green Hills. How did yeah. you feel about that? Because that seemed out of nowhere for me. Yeah, I I was questioning it. But but it's like, like Sonic was really fucking bitter about it. Yeah, I can understand Cause... him being annoyed or like confused by it, but he was legit furious about it. Because like, like even during like when when they were fighting back um, Robotnik's car, like he was still fucking bitter. <laughs> they get to the car that they're in gets harpooned, and Sonic cares more about shouting at Tom for wanting to leave the little small town. And even then, like after that, when the when like the car within the car, the carception <laughs> happens, 
and like um, EMP disabling discs. That's what I believe they are. <laughs> like start start going out. So, like Sonic jumps out and saying, "If I if I if I don't make it, then 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 ditch me. You, you're good at that." And he's like, "What? <laughs> you are fighting for your life and you're taking pot shots? It's like the fuck, dude." <laughs> Oh, well, did you remember the family that got, like, sidelined by accident, like, caught in the crossfire? Yeah. I legit, because they didn't show what those discs did until that car got hit. I thought that family was going to die. So, so did I. Like, legit, I thought that car was going to fucking explode. I would have been, that would have dropped my jaw if that car had exploded. When we see that, you know, it, considering what's in this film, it actually wouldn't have been ruled out. Oh, there's no way they're going to kill people. Because they mentioned death so much. And there's a moment later where there's so much collateral damage where even Robotnik, like, jokingly says, like, oh, is that... Oh, you found a lover. Should we name her Collateral Damage? <laughs> it's like... There's no way people survive those attacks. No. No, there has been some deaths. No, no, no. You know what it is? You know what it is? What? This whole movie takes place on a Sunday. Those cars would have had people in them on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Even the ones in the road. <laughs> Too bad it's Sunday. Those buildings would have been filled up tomorrow. But don't worry, I can see their parachutes. They're safe. <laughs> There's also the bit where he's on the. Actually, no. Let's not skip ahead. Yeah. No. So, so okay. The, so, um... then so then after like the whole fight, after that road scuffle, like the back of the car. And they're all fine. Even after, like, Sonic took the wheel and Tom whacked the shit out of... Yeah. Why like, did he... the, the unicycle. Why did he take part in that? Well, couldn't Sonic have taken apart the unicycle leg by himself, no problem? Why did Tom get involved with a stick? I think... Well, it was, it was actually a torch. Was it just so that actor could do something exciting? Probably. I mean, I, I mean, I like to think that Tom was feeling a bit left out. He's like, all right, I'm going to do something. I'm a fucking police officer. I'm going to let this two foot tall blue alien hedgehog drive a car for the first time while under duress while I fight off this little egg with a wheel sticking out of it. Yeah, which by the way, that like, you know, Tom kept the instruction booklet for how to drive a Toyota truck. <laughs> and we blatantly see the Toyota logo on the screen. Oh, then let's be honest, then I'll, then I'll sort of weird. With, with, with the product placement in this. There's so much product placement. Yeah, it's like, it reminded me of Man of Steel in some parts, actually. Remember when Man of Steel had that big fight in, the, in Smallville and everything was just an advertisement? Yeah. Oh, I remember that. But, uh, but so, yeah, so... so okay, after, so the fa I'm... after the fight, um, Sonic gets the little ball on his hand. Yeah. And, and he's trying to get it off because it's beeping constantly. We've seen this in the trailers. But yeah. he gets, like, he gets it off his hand and even though he knows that it's dangerous, he doesn't realize it's going to explode i guess even I think, though he's seen every action movie ever made i think it's probably the explosion wasn't as big as he probably thought because it was a tiny thing <laughs> maybe maybe but then yeah sonic gets caught in an explosion and gets knocked the f out oh yeah like straight up and then tom's like oh shit this little guy's dead i have to carry him back to the car and then drive him to san francisco all the way to San Francisco. At no With point the of... roof down, because it's just it got ripped off. <laughs> it legit gets cut off the top like a convertible, and at no point does Robotnik send more drones to finish them off. Or even then, no like police officer stopped him and be like, mate, what the fuck's wrong with your car? <laughs> hey, what's that thing in the back there covered in a sheet? Yeah. <laughs> but yes. Yeah, sorry, mate. <laughs> So yeah, he gets to he gets to San Fran and his his wife or girlfriend is there and his wife's girl I can't remember his wife's name or the wife's sister's name. Can you remember their names? Maddie. Maddie is Tom's wife. Right. Okay. So he he, he drives the he drives the, the destroyed truck to San Francisco, no problem, and he meets up with Maddie. And Maddie's sister is like insane. Rachel. Rachel. Maddie's sister Rachel is insanely hateful of him. Which, at this point, he's been advertised on the news as a terrorist. Worldwide global terrorist, I think it was. Ooh, we'll come back to that one, because that needs to be talked about. Hmm. Um, so, then the little family dog comes along and starts tugging at the sheet that Sonic's hidden inside The dog of. is able to rip off the blanket that's wrapped around Sonic. <laughs> Did you notice how fake-looking the, the thing under the, the sheet was in that scene, by the way? 
I'm. I think the thing under the sheet was the original design. It must have been. It must have been like a, the toy that they used uh, like in Sonic's place. Yeah. Because it was so blatantly stiff and fake looking. I mean, kids won't notice, but I couldn't help but look at that. Mm. Um, so once he rips that off, everyone freaks out. Um, Maddie's sister Rachel collapses and faints. Um, the little girl. Mm. What's the little girl's name? Do you remember her? Say Denise. Okay, so. After the dog pulls off the sheet and reveals Sonic and the and Daisy or whatever her name was collapses, um, Sonic is still unconscious for a little bit and then Maddie freaks out. Um, she wakes yeah, him up. Which, yeah, she wakes him up with uh, salts, scented salts. Yeah, smelling salts. Which okay, whatever. I don't care how you wake him up. Just wake him up. Yeah. Um, then the little girl notices how fucked up his shoes are. And she goes and just gets his shoes. Yeah, she pull, yeah she pulls out some pumas that were just upstairs. Yeah, she just had his shoes in pristine condition. I a part of me thought it was going to be explained that it was maybe going to be for Tom as like a present or something like that. Maybe, but no way would Sonic's feet fit Tom's shoes. So they well, must have been the girls. But even then, there's no way she would have had shoes like that. Why would she have shoes like that? Yeah, it was just there. Just, you know, here you go. Here, here, here are shoes that aren't fucked up. Like, oh, cool. Shoes that aren't fucked up. Yeah, that was strange. They don't put any um, explanation into where the shoes come from, which, whatever. Okay, I guess they're just shoes. It's fine. And I thought Rachel was going to see Sonic, but she never did. Um, it, was just, it was just, you know, just like Tom and Maddie talking and then... Oh, here's a Nissan Sonic with, with, with the dog. Well, she did see him, but then she fainted instantly, so... She well, might, yeah, but... She might have well, yeah, him. but, like, it was, like, at the... Like, even when she was tied up on the chair, <laughs> and they were talking about it, she didn't believe him. She's like, this is why you should have divorced him. He's talking nonsense about alien stuff like that. That was so strange. Yeah, she started denying his existence, because she was tied up at that point. Yeah. But she never gets untied either. We never see her get untied. No, she doesn't! <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, even when she's running around, even when the knees run around, she's like, uh, yeah, put on my Fitbit. At least I'm getting some steps in. <laughs> um, so after he gets his shoes, they go drive to the building where his, his rings fell. Cause it, they he... let Sonic drive for some reason. <laughs> yeah, no explanation. He just He's allowed to drive that car, even though there's two perfectly capable adults in the car with him. Um, see, they drive to the big famous Triangle Pyramid building that's in San Francisco, I don't remember its name. Uh, they get to the roof after Tom lies, and then the, my favourite scene in the movie, the funniest scene for me, was when Sonic had to hide in the bag. That was legitimately the funniest part of the movie for me. Yeah, I'm surprised, like, you know, I'm surprised the two people just casually walked away when Tom said... Yeah, there's a child that isn't mine that's in this bag. <laughs> oh, but it's okay, because he said, don't worry, I'm a cop. <laughs> well, they well they didn't know. <laughs> they weren't at reception. Oh, that was a great scene. I, it's so stupid, but I love it. Um, after that, um, Sonic's going to give his his farewells. He's, he doesn't want to leave. He makes it clear he does not want to leave. And Tom is just like surprisingly okay with this. It seemed a little heartless to me that he was so okay with Sonic having to leave, even though he didn't want to. Well, at the end of the day, I mean. Realistically, I think he was just like, you know, well, I mean, Sonic's choice. Mm, I th it still seems like he could have been a bit upset about it. Like, he just seemed so placated by the idea that Sonic was going to leave when he didn't want to. Yeah. Uh, but then, of course, Eggman shows up with his little fleet of egg drones, wearing the famous red outfit. Which they really felt the need to comment on. Yeah, they had to justify it, didn't they? They said it was a flight suit. Which, it looks nothing like a flight suit and is way too loose to be a flight suit. Yeah, way too fucking loose. <laughs> like, those things are skin tight and that is anything but. But you know why it was loose, don't you? It's because he's going to be fat in the sequel. Mm. He, it has to be loose. Um, so yeah, he's wearing the flight suit. He's talking to, And this is when Sonic officially calls him Eggman. And it's still an insult. It, like because it wasn't Sonic the Adventure 1. the drones are egg-shaped. Yeah, he says, Face it, Eggman. You're never gonna catch me. It and just, it just, I don't know. The the fact that he points out the egg-shaped drones. I mean, 
yeah, it's it's a prelude to Donut to Donut Lord and Pretzel Girl. But it, I don't know, it just seemed a bit forced in. Well, maybe if you'd given them egg-based names like in the games, but I don't know. But even then, naming them w- w- would have been pointless. Yeah, remember when he, f- he opened the little box and the, the f- switch had bad nicks written underneath it? Yeah. I was expecting cartoony robots, I'm not going to lie. Hmm. Uh, I mean, this is Robotnik, keep in mind. And not then, Eggman. And then the scene that everyone freaked out about is when Sonic pushes the two off the, the, the building uh, with no explanation for why he's doing it. Uh, obviously, we knew what he was doing because we're smart, but I mean, I don't think the kids knew because I heard kids gasp like in amazement when he pushed them off the, the building. I think. Well, I think if he, if I think like if he explained it there, it would have given the robot. It would have given Robotnik time to repair <laughs> because like he was ready for something to do so, but he literally did not see it coming that he, that um, he, he was going to push Tom and Maddie off the roof, and he felt the need to ruin the only good joke that he made in that part. Yeah, he could have just left it with, I was not expecting that, but he just felt the need to just add on more to that, but, you know, whatever. Um, so then, okay, so here's the thing that in, that confused me. Okay, go ahead. So, I was fine with the whole, you know, Sonic playing, Sonic dicking around with the missiles and the bullets and stuff, mm-hmm. but Robotnik breaking that sound barrier as well? Yeah, I was going to ask you how you felt about that, actually. Okay. So it was, so he he was able to grab the quill and analyze it, and it turned out it had unlimited power. You can't convert all of that power into speed, though, because at the end of the day, while Sonic was going that fast, Robotnik clearly wasn't. So his ship was going all that fast. Where Robotnik was still static in his cockpit. Yeah, that's weird. The ship was moving at super speed, but Robotnik himself, the pilot, was not supercharged in any way. Yeah. So there's Which no way he could really have possibly kept up while piloting the ship. So. Um, I mean, mm, they didn't explain it at all, so it really does come across more like magic than technology. Mm. Which that's all, that always annoys me, you know, when they just treat advanced tech like you don't need to explain it. Mm. But of course, then we get the moment where Sonic throws a ring and um, Tom and Maddie are thrown into the Green Hills barn. <laughs> oh, did you notice what time of day it was in that scene? Daytime. And then what happens two minutes later after the chase sequence is over? Nighttime. <laughs> oh, that was so what blatant. The, hell happened there? the rings at no point. Okay, so let me explain. So yeah, like to- like Tommy says, he gets he throws them through a ring that sends them all the way back to Green Hills while they're in San Francisco. Then Sonic goes through a chase scene through San Fran. Then he no, throws he goes, a ring. He goes, through, he goes through San Fran, then a bit of France, then a bit of China, then a bit in Egypt. And then back to Green Hills. And the chase sequence lasts about two, three minutes tops. And somehow in that time, Green Hills has gone from the middle of the day to blatant middle of the night. Yeah. (laughs) I was just scratching my head. I was like, wait, do they have time travel powers in these rings? I just thought considering it was nighttime, I thought they would have been at a different spot of the world. But then I was thinking about it. I was like, no, hang on a minute. France, then China. Both of those are middle of the day. One of those should have been at least at a sunrise or a sunset. I just don't think the filmmakers cared enough to keep track of what times and days it would be at those places. Mm. Also, I find it humorous that Robotnik pointed out that Sonic is running on one of the Seven Wonders as he destroyed a Sphinx a moment ago. <laughs> yeah, you can't go up there, it's one of the Seven Wonders, and then I can just blow up the top half of the pyramid. Yeah, yeah he proceeds to shoot the pyramid. <laughs> Ow! Ow! Ah! Okay. I laughed and my jaw clicked. Ow. Oh, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. That's, that's this, this is staying in, by the way. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I you thought... should really, you should really add in a loud like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I might. <laughs> uh, right. So after all that, we end up back in Green Hills. It's night time. And, and then, um... so, uh, and because of the explosion, Sonic gets knocked out again. <laughs> he gets completely Which taken prob- out. Yeah. Which prompted Tom to grab the rings and be like, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try these rings." Robotnik doesn't see this, by the way. Yeah. Remember that Tom was in front of him, <laughs> but he he suddenly doesn't see Tom using the rings to get behind him and punching him in the face. I mean, I I, I like that, but even still, I thought legit he was going to notice that he was behind him and pull a gun. 
Yeah, I was I was honestly expect I, I thought he was gonna elbow Tom off Tom off the, the, the ship, but no, he just doesn't expect it. And then as he's taunting um, Tom asking him, you know, why would you throw your life away for this little alien? He's like, Because he's my friend. And then Sonic explodes with lightning. Like, yeah, he's like, oh, she said the F word! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> he explodes like, like, literally like the flash. Like, lightning goes everywhere. His eyes turn blue. And he's like, this is my power. And I'm not using it to run anymore. Oh, I'm not using it to run away anymore, sorry. And then um, he just completely trashes Eggman's little flying thingy. And then uh, they send him to the Mushroom World. <laughs> which I honestly thought, based on what we saw in the trailer, I honestly thought that they were both going to end up there and that the fight would have continued and thus the start of Sonic the Hedgehog, the games. Yeah, but I thought he was going to go no. to Pino at some point, but he doesn't, does he? No. So Eggman, so Eggman is cast off to Mushroom World and it's at this point where, you know, he's gotten, you know, he, he, he shaved off his hair for some reason. Uh, his his moustache has gradually poofed out Somehow. and he's made Agent Stone. <laughs> Agent Stone, an actual stone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he goes absolutely insane at that point. And did you notice he was walking like the Death Egg robot? Uh, I didn't. What I noticed is that he was slightly going into the Mike Pollock Eggman voice. <laughs> That'd be cool if they dubbed Mike over him in the, in the sequel. Well, 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 not dubbed, but I noticed that in, instead of his normal voice, he was he was going to like the sort of raspy kind of voice that Eggman has. <laughs> like I noticed it in bits. Yeah, I I feel like they're they're leaving things open, just for mm. stuff like that references and things. So then, like the sort of end game to this is the... like they're back in Green Hills because Tom realized, yeah, I kind of want to stay here. And, and mainly, like he doesn't want to go back to his, to uh, Maddie's sisters at all. <laughs> and so, so then they, so then, so then they live together. And Sonic is now living with them. That's weird to me. Some of the interactions I didn't get. Like them treating him like their actual child. Yeah, it's a school night. You should go to your kid. That I didn't get. Is he going to school? Yeah, is Sonic going to school now? That I didn't get. I didn't. Li I didn't really appreciate the Olive Garden gift card. That was a bit of a sort of an anticlimactic moment. Yeah, yeah. We didn't mention yeah because at that point he's still Tom's still been labelled as a terrorist, and they don't explain how they undo that. He should be the most wanted guy in the country. Everyone in town should hate him. Well, some time clearly passed. They could have thrown a phone line in there, like you know we've. We've disavowed all the stuff that Eggman caused, and you're no longer considered a terrorist or whatever. But they just did the but Olive Garden thing instead. Yeah, a fifty-dollar Olive Garden gift card. And so then it turns out there's like they somehow found Sonic's cave, got everything from it, and put it into the loft. Which was a so cute Sonic. Scene. So Sonic is now living in their loft. <laughs> At least he's not living in a cage as their pet. Let's be thankful for that one. True. I was afraid something weird like that, but they do treat him like the actual kid of the family now. Yes, and he flosses twice. <laughs> uh, he, that's how you know this is going to be dated as fucking ten years. Mm. <laughs> and then we got the post credit scene, aka actual sequel bait. Oh! oh no. <laughs> okay, so this is the actual spoiler bit, so uh, system, if you could just uh, add in a time skip here. Uh, in the top left corner, and here, right. So, we get an obvious clip, by the way, if you don't do those edits, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll do something. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we get a random shot of a cliff, and then Tails appears. He's so cute, I he's, couldn't take it. He's adorable. Here's the one thing that got me, though. Mm hmm? That's his actual voice actress. Yeah, I looked into it. I thought that voice sounds really familiar. Why do I know that voice? And then it's actually Colleen O'Shaughnessy. Or however you say that last name. So why do they get Colleen back for Tails, but they didn't bring in Roger for Sonic? I think I have an explanation for that. What? I don't think she's coming back. I think if we do get a sequel, I think she's going to get replaced. Well, that'd be kind of a big fuck you, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
she's not even credited in the movie, which is what makes me think she's not going to stick around. I noticed. I was looking. I was like, hey, I don't see tails. Yeah, because which kind of made me think it was last minute. But okay, so but yeah, that was a weird sequel bit. I mean, I welcome it. I always welcome tails. Tails is the best. It'll be kind of out of place though if the film doesn't do well to warrant a sequel. It's not going to do well to get a sequel. It's not getting a sequel. We'll wait and see. But yeah, it was. I mean, it was a film. I mean, it, I, I I liked it. It yeah. had moments that made me question it. I do think it deserves a seven out of ten. Yeah, same here. Seven out of ten. Maybe a maybe a, a generous eight. But here's what I wonder: mm -hmm. if they kept the original design, what would Tails and, and the Echidnas have looked? Uh, the echidnas probably would have looked like uh, the echidnas probably would have looked like the ones Pendas draws, <laughs> and tails would have looked like my dog character from Forces, <laughs> <laughs> with, with the beady little eyes. Did you think you know what? A little cute little touch. They didn't reveal he had two tails right away. Yeah, no, like like that's okay. Cute. So apparently you can stick them together, which that's kind of weird. I'm going to assume it's a perspective thing until I see proof that he confused them or not. Because I think they just wanted to be like, hey, look, everybody who doesn't know what Tails is, he's only got one tail. Oh, no way, he's got two, and he can fly super fast with them. That was so, Yeah, it's, it was an odd one. So he, he came to the world according that Sonic is there. So he's looking for Sonic for some reason. He blatantly knows Sonic exists, which makes me think, right, that Longclaw isn't dead. Either Longclaw isn't dead, or maybe Tails is working for someone to track down Sonic. Maybe he's working with Amy to fight off all the echidnas that are taking over the world for some reason. Maybe. I mean, realistically, like, I don't know if they're following the Sonic X law, where time uh, works differently in the Sonic world and the human world. We'll have to wait and see. We have no idea. We've got nothing to work on. Mm. They don't give us the much. Seeing this film does make me appreciate that they did remodel Sonic. Absolutely, definitely. Because seeing some of those scenes in the childish look of Sonic, they would not have worked with, with, with the previous model. No, absolutely not. It would have been totally um, uncanny and just hard to look at. Mm. Like, can you imagine a heartfelt scene with that little gremlin? <laughs> <laughs> the blue-eyed, shifty-ass gremlin. Nope. Uh, Bear with, so you can just cut this out. Right, sorry. But yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, like I, I'm glad it's a film they put effort into. Yeah, you can tell they actually gave a crap. Someone somewhere cared enough. I mean, they brought Tyson Hess in, you know? They they, they, they they didn't just bring anyone. They brought someone in who's worked with Sonic. Well-liked in the community, too, which is hard to come by nowadays. Mm. We don't even like Alan Webber anymore for some reason. But my problem with it is the fact that it might not do well. I honestly don't think it will. I think it's going to tank. Well, there's the problem, because... Like, budget-wise... It won't do well. And that's what they care about. It's unfortunate because they had to spend extra to redesign them. Well, 5 mil, not the room with 35 mil. But it's like, this film could be great. And, you know, I think it's one of the better examples on how to do a game, a game film. Yeah, it's basically a superhero origin story. Essentially, and I would, and I wanted it to be on a shining pillar with Detective Pikachu and Castlevania and say, this is how you do them. But of course, Hollywood's going to look at the money before they look at the feedback. Yeah. And that's the problem. Yeah, they don't care how good a movie is. They only care about if it does well financially. Yeah, and, and that's just going to that's just gonna effectively... And, and that's going to affect future game films. <clears throat> is that going to report that Sonic didn't do well? And of course, those casualties were just think, oh, it, 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 it was just, it must have been a bad film. I mean, the Birds of Prey fans are certainly going to dance over that. <laughs> but like, you know, like, 
and, and will we get the Mario film in two years' time? That's... Like, how how affected would that be, you know? Well, the thing about the Mario movie is it's still so far off that if this tanks, uh, there's still a chance they could just cancel Mario and be like, uh... hey, video game movies just aren't a thing that are going to happen. I mean, Illumination is, is the one doing it, and I'm pretty sure Nintendo could continue funding it if they do have hope for the project. Mm, I was because uh... let's be honest, N- Nintendo can afford three crashes at this point. <laughs> yeah, they can, they've got a few freebies; they can just fail and still keep going. Mm. Sonic doesn't have that luxury right now. No, this movie needs to do well, and thankfully, all the reviews have been good. Like I watched it... um, critical. I watched. Um, Critical's review before we, we did this, and he even he gave it a good review. Uh, Moist Critical. Yeah, even he said, you know what, this movie's good. It's aimed for kids. He but... ate peppers for the first trailer. <laughs> <laughs> even he said it was good. So you know, if that guy who tortures himself on screen just to make a joke says, "Hey, this is worth your time, and you should watch it," yeah, then I mean, you yeah. you do have a good point. If Moist Critical likes it, then. Yeah, that's actually quite a good achievement. <laughs> he gave it a 6 out of 10, so a little bit less than what we gave it, but not by much, and he did blatantly well, say it. Then, well, the thing is, it's above average. It's not good. Well, I mean, it, it, it's not brilliant. It's just good. It's, it's a passable. good film. It's passable. It's it's a B... It's a B minus. It's a... It's a it's a passing grade. It's a hey, you didn't do exceptionally, but you know what? You don't suck either. So just you just carry on. A, a passing grade, you could say. You think you're at the middle. Now go to the top. But it won't do that if people don't watch it, and that's why I'm saying right now, if you watched the movie and you liked it, recommend it to other people because this movie needs to this movie needs to do well to succeed, and it's not going to at the way it's going. What do you think would do? What do you think the sequel would even be about, if you had to guess? Probably more of Sonic's homeworld. You think they'll go the like, Smurfs route and just straight up make it all animated? Uh, the what route, sorry? The Smurfs route, where the, the first two oh. are like live action and cartoons, and the, the third one is just a cartoon? Uh, well, I mean, you know, so like, they go back, so like, you know, Tails finds Sonic, and it's like, uh... Yeah, shit's gone down, dude. Like, it's been so many years. Like, you won't believe. So, Longclaw sent me here. By the way, she's alive. Uh, we kind of need you to come back. Maybe you could help us. Some prick named Robotnik just appeared out of nowhere. And then Sonic gets this look on his face like, Did I do that? <laughs> they bring in your little, they bring in your little white just for that moment. <laughs> That'd be he, he actually pulls out the specs to do that moment. <laughs> Actually, speaking of uh, specs and stuff, Sonic wears a lot of outfits in this movie, doesn't he? He dresses up quite a bit. Yeah. So, yeah, final thoughts, you know. I say watch it. Yeah, definitely watch it. You can't you can't go wrong with just a good film. There are some flaws in it, but I don't feel they're big enough to distract you from the film. Yeah, there's mostly just continuity errors and a few mistakes in the writing yeah, that didn't get it, covered up. It's not entirely. And the fact and also the fact that Sonic flosses. It's not <laughs> the case that it's like, you know, just seeing those moments will make you instantly want to t- want to walk away from the cinema. Not like the Zaster movie. Yeah, it's just something that'll make you scratch your head. So yeah, passing grades all around. Nice yeah. uh, nice fun time. Uh join us next time when we review Birds of Prey. Fuck off. <laughs> no, that's never gonna happen. Fuck Birds of Prey. No. 